Greetings, my fellow intellectuals and bookworms. It's time for another video. This one's slightly unexpected. Why Disney is destined to fail. First of all, I know this is going to piss people off. I don't give a fuck. Second of all, I know that book reviews are my bread and butter, but my Why I Hate Amazon video got several hundred views, and my stock investing things, how I said that Macy's and Sears would completely collapse and go under, were true and did well. So I'm going to combine the two. We're going to look at Disney today, a company that most people think is classic Americana. Most people say will never fail. And to a certain extent, it's been around so long. It's been around for a hundred years. But to people who say it's not going to go under, it's been around for so long. First of all, fuck you. Second of all, Lehman Brothers. It's been around since the 1800s and it collapsed in the financial crisis. And before you say that was a crisis on the level of the two of the Great Depression, I have another example for you. GE, it's been around since the 1800s, and now it's on its way to complete collapse. So, and it's doing things that no healthy company should do. It's laying off a lot of people, which, again, is not something they should do. Um, and even though its films are still making them bank, stuff like Avengers Endgame, which brought in a record amount of money, um... Star Wars and, you know, Captain Marvel. They created controversy, they destroyed fan goodwill, and they got bad reviews. For example, um, Avengers Endgame, despite bringing in an unprecedented amount of money, only, made, only got 75% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is terrible for an Avengers movie. And the fact that they just wrapped up 22 movies and a lot of people are disappointed, they're going to restart this as another group of 22 movies. How is that going to impact sales? Well, it's going to decrease them. Look at the new Star Wars as people were excited. Now, the la after The Last Jedi, Rogue One, Solo, and several others, people are less excited. And here's the other thing. You know the guys who started work on um, last, who were hired as writers for the last season of Game of Thrones who proceeded to butcher it? Most people call them dumb and dumber now because they fuck shit up. But in on honesty, they just were terrible writers and they didn't care because they were moving on to another cash cow, Star Wars. If Star Wars was bad before, peop putting people who can't write for shit and fucked up Game of Thrones on it is going to make it worse. Also, think of it this way. You like Star... Maybe you're a Star Wars fan. Maybe you like it. Well, let's say you're a Game of Thrones fan. Um... Well, now you have absolute hatred for them because they fucked up your show. Now you're going to hate the entire Disney Corp as a result. So there's that. And with films now, it costs two to two and a half times the production budget just to market it to make enough money alone. That's why we've seen high-profile failures lose a lot of money. A, sh a cheap move blockbuster nowadays costs $250 billion. So if we do some math here, it'll cost at least $500 million to market it. So you need to make $750 million to break even. That means you can lose a billion dollars in one movie easily. And even if you stick to cheaper movies, let's say $150 million, which is generally seen as a small to mid-sized movie, that's still $300 million to market it, and that's how you can lose half a billion dollars in one movie. So with Disney, they've gotten lucky, right? Their reboots have done well. Stuff like live-action Aladdin, live-action Aladdin King, even when getting panned by critics, did well, right? But you can only, in this case, it's like we're playing a game of Russian roulette, only... Instead of each time we have an empty chamber and there's only one bullet in the gun and six chambers, every time we miss, we keep adding bullets to it. And before you say it, that's not how the game is played. I fucking know it is, but that's what they're doing. So if you miss one movie failure and make a lot of money, it increases the chance that the next one will be a failure and the next one is almost certainly to cost more money. And it also makes you overconfident. So... That's how Lionsgate Studios, the number five film, fifth largest film company in the U.S., went bankrupt in less than a year. A $20 billion a year company, or five or ten if I remember correctly, went bankrupt in less than three months because of, a ser because of five to ten films out of 20 on their slate, 
which is a decently sized IP amount, bankrupt, gone, completely bankrupt. They're never going to recover because they owe so much money and they can't make any new films. Also, it must have to affect financing. If I'm Bank of America, yes, $5 billion is a, is chump change because I'm bringing in $250 billion a year, but I'm not going to, I still don't fucking like to lose money. And I'm almost certainly not going to lend more money to the film industry anymore, so I'm going to cut Disney off from the taps. In addition, they're, we have bad news after bad news. They miss their reverence, their revenue gu- projections for analysts, which in general, Wall Street highly punishes if you fuck that up. And here's the thing, they've done it twice so far, and their stock goes up after missing revenue. It should cause the company to go down in value. It shot up from like 80 bucks to like 140 in no time, and even with... And the day it reports bad numbers, it gains 10 points on the stock exchange. That's a fucking bubble. In addition, again, huge layoffs. They took on huge debt to acquire Fox, and honestly, they're just shooting themselves in the foot. They're only going to use five films from the Fox lineup, apparently a year. And even with firing people for cost reductions, which as we all know, or redundant employee... It's it's code word for we don't f- it's code word for we're trying to save money because we've un because we've taken on way too much fucking debt so we're just gonna fire people to cover up the fact that we screwed shit up, and also they managed to fuck up Star Wars, they managed to fuck up Marvel. Honestly, what what do they have left to fuck up? So their film their theme park revenue, um, while it had been healthy. It, it's starting to show that it's not going up, and it's Disney visits are starting to decline, and theme park revenue is starting to decline. And they spent like $2.5 billion on a theme park expansion when their revenue started to fucking decline. That's, stupid deci- that's a fucking stupid decision. In addition, the entire movie industry is going downhill in ticket sales. And with the cost of movies, Disney doesn't need to have a year and a half of failures to go one billion dollar failures each to go bankrupt they need less than a few months of it to fuck up people who say oh look at their hotels espn their cruise ships first of all disney cruises in general are only taken by people with families which doesn't seem bad right except if you look in the fucking u.s our fertility rate is insanely low and it will likely keep going down unless steps are taken um, what that means is we'll have population decline. There'll be less kids unless we do fucking something about it. The only reason it's still stable is because of immigration. So that will mean that there's less kids for Disney cruises, less families, more people dying childless, alone, or just husband and wife. And that'll affect their bottom line. In addition, a lot of kids, more kids, are growing up without Disney. I mean, even looking back at my childhood, yes, I was exposed to Disney, The Lion King, Pocahontas, El Dorado, all that shit. Looking back on it, even though I had favorable memories of them, I still thought they fucking sucked. And that was before I turned 13. After 13, only for a year or two, I still watched Disney Channel, and even then it went down the shitter. In addition, people who say ESPN, football subscribe. Football viewers are declining, noticeably, and it costs two and a half billion just for the cost of the content for ESPN alone. Even with more ads, they're starting to lose money. Um, so ESPN's going downhill. Cable subscribers at all are going downhill. And Disney Plus, that's honestly Disney streaming. Honestly, the fact that that Apple that Apple TV and Apple has the same movies likely without the subscription, without the commitment, and almost certainly cheaper, does not help matters. In addition, the fact that there's 20 different streaming companies already, the main ones are Roku, Apple TV, um, fucking Google TV, fucking Amazon Fire Video, and a few others, 
and a whole bunch of minor ones, and there's or, plus Netflix, Hulu, and 15 others, that there's 20 already, means that they're competing for market share in an already overcrowded market. So they're on track to lose money. That's why they're making it $19 a month or less. And even then, it's honestly not going to fix their problem. So they made a bad commitment there. In addition, people who say they can just sell their IP. Well, that's, first of all, a fucking short-term solution. Second of all, it destroys your ability to make money in the future, so that's a terrible idea. It's like saying, well, this factory is doing bad financially. Let's sell the fucking factory. Yes, you did put a short-term profit, but you can't make any more of the goods that are making you fucking money. So you've just shot yourself in the fucking foot. In addition, um... They don't really have much to cut. They're stuck in a bind. Um, they're already paying theme park employees not enough to get by. In some instances, or even paying them illegally low. You can't cut there. You can't cut fucking concessions costs. Um, you can't. Um, you can't cut the plant infrastructure stuff like Disneyland and shit like that. So you can't cut that. What is there to cut? Basically nothing. You could cut the fucking CGI, but if, but even with CGI looking shitty and people complaining about it, without CGI, a lot of these films would be even shittier. For example, imagine Avengers Endgame with without CGI and with actors doing and with and with fucking tiny white wires that you can see in the frame flying through the air. Imagine how fucking shitty that would be. So if you cut CGI, which is the only thing to cut, you make the movie shittier, which will cost you more money, which will cost you more, more, more ticket sales, which will cost you more money, which will decline your revenue further, which will put you in a self-spiraling downward spiral, which will just basically a negative feedback loop that will continue forever. So you can't do that, and cutting employee um, CEO bonuses is generally seen as not doable. So fixed costs are basically uncuttable, and if one segment declines, the others will pop it up, and they did for a bit, but we're seeing a decline in multiple segments. The movie industry is honestly declining, and it's because, and people have never really hit the reason, nail on the head for it, and the actual reason is that ticket Theater tickets in my area are 15 bucks an hour. You're not going to get in for under 13 bucks, even if you're an active veteran, a fucking student, and a senior, and, and you go for a fucking afternoon matinee. You're not getting in for 13 bucks. So, and now granted, this is in Southern California, but this is not fucking LA. This is in Orange County, a second rate suburb, which is technically an exurb 50 miles away. So, and even when f theater tickets in other areas, for example, Indiana, rural Indiana where my grandparents live, even there, apparently at the local theater, which is 20 miles away or something, it's seven fifty a, a a ticket, which is not cheap. And at my other grandparents in Florida, they have a movie theater that only shows fiat films that have been out for like two months and that the call and that they have to pay almost nothing to the film distributor to use. And even there, it's five bucks if you're lucky. And that's only, and it's only in business because of all the fucking retirees there who have nothing else to do. So fi film tickets are too high, and almost everything's cheaper. You know that? You can buy a fucking used book off Amazon for four bucks, and you'll probably get, t if it's a thick book, and you can get it for four bucks, which is three ninety nine shipping plus a penny. It's doable. You can get ten hours of entertainment for four bucks. Your phone is basically free because you know the it's almost impossible to calculate out how much it costs. Sure, your telephone bill may be two hundred bucks a month or something, but when you actually come down to it, an hour of it's probably a penny. So you got that. You got games on your iPad. You got your fucking TV. You got your cable subscription, which even though it's overpriced, is still cheap as fuck, like maybe a buck a day or less. There's So there's no reason why anyone would go to a movie unless it's particularly good. The only movie I plan on seeing this year after a series of disappointments is Zombieland 2, because I've been waiting for fucking ever for that, because the first one was so good, and it was in development hell. 28 months later, the long-awaited sequel to 28 Days and Weeks Later, which I've been wanting to have see for a while 
And even then, I'm concerned that my favorite studios will fuck that shit up. Anywho, so... Their film... In conclusion, their film industry... Their film divisions... On the decline. Their TV business is on the decline. Their theme parks are on decline. Just because they're a conglomerate and have been around forever... Honestly, just means... That... People won't expect that they're going to collapse, but they will. And nothing lives forever, but even things that do well in this case, it's that they become too used to their existing model and that's not working anymore. And like any society in flux, if you've ever read the book Collapse, they doubled down on their existing model. And it's been working for about a year and a half, but it's starting to show signs of cracking and rather than adapting, they've continued to double down. So... Honestly, I see a silver lining to this. I could, You and I both can make a fortune off of shorting the stock, betting on it to decline. Technically, it increases your risk of... it. Theoretically, your losses are infinite because whenever the stock goes up, um, you lose money. But in all honesty, if you've ever watched a movie, The Big Short, or read that book, I've lo- I love the movie you would know that it's very easy to make a fortune off of a few small bets. And with this, almost no one's shorting it. So even when it loses $5 in a single day and doesn't recover, no one thinks to short it. So, like my others, I suggest you short the fuck out of it. You can make a fortune and send it to America's golden boy. No one's going to think to short... Almost no one will think it's worth shorting. So, that's my investment advice. short the shit out of it and start making money honestly i want to i'm so confident that it's gonna clap that it's gonna completely collapse that i only hope there'll be something left to loot from the abandoned disneyland near me banana heim and i've even bet five dollars it'll collapse honestly if i had a million dollars i'd invest a good chunk of it in shorting this company so Those are my concluding thoughts. I'll probably also also upload a video, um, my documentary I made while on Africa on Safari. But for now, I just want to say like, comment, and subscribe if you've not done so. This is Sean Hartnett wishing you a good day. And this video is long enough. I know this is really long, but I hope you watch it. All right, bye.